HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the latest on Hiller playoff hockey and boys basketball, Matt Clark has our HCAM insider, and the select board recognized some Hopkinton Girl Scouts who received the Silver Award. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Six members of the Hillers Alpine Ski Team participated in the MIAA State Finals at East Mountain in Charlemont, Mass. The six that participated include seniors Max and Jack Rogers, junior Jackson Schlussel, junior Cameron Hanna, junior Kate Barry, and senior Will Hutchinson. You can view the results at our website hcam.tv. The Hopkinton Garden Club Speaker Series continues on March 17th. There will be a presentation by Angels Garden Center owner Jeffrey Darty about how to create container gardens to beautify and enhance your home. The presentation will take place at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Public Library and is open to the public. You can view more details at our website hcam.tv. The select board recognized some Hopkinton Girl Scouts who recently received the Silver Award. Here's a look. The process all started last year, actually. The Silver Award project is a, it's just a fantastic opportunity for the girls to get together and make a difference. And we started discussions of this last spring, um, trying to figure out what would be viable. We had some interviews with various people and discovered that it was a project that we really wanted to um, take on and they have a lot to tell you. So the attitude of gratitude has been something I think that's really started to take shape. I'm Sabrina. Uh, I'm Holly. I'm Ava. I'm Charlotte. Okay. We are Hopkinton Girl Scout, 8th grade cadet Girl Scout shoot 68243. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share our Silver Award project in Attitude of Gratitude. Our goal in this project is to teach the Hopkin community about physical and emotional benefits of having a grateful heart. With special attention given to the Hopkin Middle School and working with the young children and children at the Hopkin Public Library, gratitude really makes us more happy with everything we have. Gratitude is an amazing property of the human mind. The more gratitude we feel, the happier we'll be. Gratitude helps us to reduce stress and increase productivity. It makes us feel much better about ourselves and others. But one of our very first thoughts in our project was how. How could one positive emotion impact our lives so greatly? It all starts with one powerful chemical called oxytocin, also known as one of the happiness hormones. This hormone can be triggered naturally through being with friends, family, playing sports, and lots more. One main thing that triggers oxytocin is gratitude. When participating in grateful activities, such as writing consistently in gratitude journals and making gratitude rocks, our relaxation levels increase dramatically. We become more energized and our sleep quality even increases. But the key to a grateful heart lies in the repetition. The more we show our gratitude, the more grateful we will be. To work towards our project's goals, we did some online research. We then met with psychologists Elizabeth Daniels and Kim Manning last spring in their Hopkinton offices to learn all about the positive effects of gratitude and created the trifold you see here to help us share about our subject. Next, we went, met with Ms. Ben Benick, assistant principal, and Ms. Grady, eighth grade English teacher and gratitude guru at Hopkinton Middle School to determine the best ways to deliver our message to the school. Since then, we set up a table at back to school night, constructed flyers with gratitude facts, and posted them throughout the middle school. The, and the art department contributed beautiful student art to the gratitude theme display in the main lobby. 
Most recently, the guidance department allowed us to contribute to Random Acts of Kindness Week by making and distributing 1,000 inspirational sticky notes for school lockers, creating gifts and gratitude bookmarks for English teachers and their students, and hosting an educational table where students and teachers wrote 70 thank you notes to the office staff, school nurses, and custodial and cafeteria staff. We have had many opportunities to reach the Hoppington community about our message about gratitude. We created gratitude rocks with fun sayings, and at the annual Girl Scout Fall Sing, we had children decorate them. These rocks help, pe- help to remind people to think about a few things they are grateful for each day. Thanks to the hospitality of the Hoppington Public Library, we are allowed to display our project in the lobby there and held gratitude-filled raffles, which we have since distributed to three lucky residents. At Caroling on the Common, we displayed our project and sold gratitude ornaments. On Martin Luther King Day, we hosted, hosted a table where people could write thank you notes to give to friends, families, and teachers. We also talked about how wonderful the respite center is and gave people the opportunity to leave them thank you notes as well. We have many gratitude projects to come. We are happy to say that we will host workshops at the Hopkinton Public Library on these three dates, March 16th, 23rd, and 30th for grades K through 5 from 3.30 to 4.30 upstairs in the children's room. We will work with the kids to show them how gratitude works and how they can use it in their lives. We will, we will do activities like crafts with gratitude rocks, gratitude journals, thank you cards, and fun books they can read. We are excited to host a table at HMS March 20th, Rise Up Day, with information on the respite center for which our troop is especially thankful for. We plan to make a permanent appreciation station at the middle school where kids can write to their friends or teachers and also hope to make an online gratitude journal with gratitude prompts that kids can write in and reflect every day. We are trying to make a sustainable project that can stick with people in this community. Thank you for listening and I hope everyone can incorporate gratitude into their everyday lives. We have a poster we'd like to share with you, some of our favorite parts of this project, and we can answer questions now. That's awesome. Very nicely done, girls. Very nicely done. Thank you. Um, Mary Jo, why don't you start us off? Okay. Well, I want to congratulate you, and particularly with the theme, attitude is and gratitude. We need a lot more of that right now. Uh, I was going to ask you, what are you doing with your posters after today? Uh, we display many of our posters at the Hopkinton Middle School, which is where we go to school, along with um, some beautiful art displays completed by um, students at the school. We, we have elections right now, and we have people coming in and out of the town hall every day and for another week. Uh, and I would love to see you put them in the front hall here at town hall for a week, and then you can take them to the school. Would that be okay? Yes, that would be great. great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And that is all right with you. We can put them down there. I do believe we make the rules, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and in fact, through through the chair, I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for coming to town hall. I remember when I came in contact with you on MLK Day and extended the invitation for you to come before the board, and I told you everything will be fine. So far, you've done fantastically well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Coming up next, the latest Hiller playoff highlights, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options.
Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller Hockey had a tremendous season and went into the sectionals as the first seed with a 19-1 record. Here's a look at what happened. In the first round of playoff action, the first-seeded Hiller's hockey team took on 17-seeded Silver Lake at the Canton Ice House on Friday, February 28th. The Hiller's offense picked up right where they left off, netting two goals in the first period. There's a quick shot, turned away, secondary shot by Amblin is turned away as well. Nearly had it, Walsh sends it out, back into Rogers, goal! Hiller's up, 1-0, Kyle Rogers! Just a great play from right off the faceoff, Sean Walsh with a great move, got the initial shot, went wide, but was able to go in, retrieve that puck, and he always seems to get that puck right on Kyle Rogers' stick out front. Send it out, takes a hit into the corner, out in front, Rogers looking for the shot, high yeah. slot, got it! Kyle Rogers does it again! Well, this line is definitely the top line in the league, so all All-Stars. And they're showing it here tonight. They just know how to play with each other, find each other great. And Kyle Rogers, one of the best shots in going. It was 2 to nothing Hillers after the first. Silver Lake netted a goal with 8.57 left, but the Hillers responded in a big way. The two of his bounce there for the Hillers. That one came out at a 45 degree angle. Sheamus racing up the ice. Takes oh. a shot, no! Ronnie Sheamus! What a beautiful play there by Sheamus. Came down the boards to keep that puck in. Saw that he had a lane and went in and he snapped that thing top corner. That goal comes with 8-11 left to go in the second. The Hillers have had some big shorthanded goals this year, Tom. None bigger than that right now to break Silver Lake's momentum here. And guess what? That was the first goal of the season for Ronnie Sheamus. Walsh sends it back and it's picked up by Wolf. And now it's stolen away by Rogers. Here he comes. Rogers leaves it for Walsh, shot, go! Sean Walsh does it again! What a play there, Sean Walsh with a beautiful goal by Kyle Rogers at the neutral zone. Made a neat little move to get that puck away from Silver Lake. Came in and slipped a pass to the leading Walsh right under the legs of the defenseman. And Walsh put it home. Back to Mira. Takes a shot and a goal! Wow, Bobbitt Mira! Grady Sullivan didn't have a chance with that one. Uh, credit Hamlet and Rogers in front. They created some good traffic. The uh, Silver Lake goalie was struggling to see that puck coming through. It was a 5-2 game after the second, but the Hillers hung on for the 5-3 win and advanced to the quarterfinals. On Sunday, March 1st, the first-seeded Hillers met up with ninth-seeded Bishop Stang in the quarterfinals. Hillers trailed one to nothing heading into the second period until Sean Walsh tied things up. Along the far side corner, Sean Walsh trying to dig it out. Hamlet over to Sean Walsh, shot, turn away, and the second ever shot, yes! Well, you knew it wasn't going to take the long. Sean Walsh, he tried to, tough to keep him down, made the nice move around, took the shot, and then got his own rebound. Bishop Stang would net two goals after that and go up three to one, but the Hillers responded with a goal of their own. Dicka Rogers, and a tremendous save once again by Dorr. Leaves it for Mara. And Mara out in front, Hamlet jams it in, beauty! Great play by Mara there in the corner. He waited, got around the defenseman, sent the puck right out front, and Hamlet again had a little bit of a puck jump on him, but he was able to get the second rebound, put it home. That's huge here. In the third period, some tremendous goaltending by Bishop Stang's Matt Dorr forced the Hillers to pull their goaltender and the Spartans would net two empty net goals and take the upset win over the Hillers 5-2. Hopkinton ends their tremendous season with a record of 20 wins and two losses. Congratulations to the team and Coach McPherson on an unbelievable run they certainly have a lot to be proud of. Hiller Boys Basketball took down first-seeded Grafton in the first round of the Central Division II sectionals. They met up with Milford in the semifinals at Clark University. Here's what happened. And we'll get you their starters as well in just a moment. Rosen with possession on the left wing, feeds it up to Ambersoni, up for three, got it! 
The eighth-seeded Hopkinton Hillers took on fourth-seeded Milford in the Central Division II sectional semifinals. Side, now Mafiori on the corner. Mafiori back up to Ambersoni. Finfrock calling for it along the left wing. Launches three, got it! The Hillers got off to a 14-0 run to start the first quarter and ended up outscoring Milford 23-10 in the frame. Feeds it over to Cooper, along the right wing, now into Rosen. Rosen trying to work the defender, up and in! Another strong pivot move. Unstoppable. Kiss it off the glass for the two. Four different Hillers hit threes in the first. Along the top of the perimeter, feeds it in to the interior, and then it's passed over to Keith from Finfrock, and he knocks down a three. Unbelievable, 23 to four Hillers. Milford struck back in the second quarter and hit a few threes of their own, including a pair from Ralph Franklin Jr. Milford outscored the Hillers 21 to 14 in the second. To the corner, now over to Cooper along the way, around the perimeter they go, Mafiori thought about a three. Finfrock kicks it back out to Ambersoni, now Cooper coming in from the right side up to Ambersoni. Ambersoni over to the corner, Ned Dean for three, count it! Ned Dean coming off the bench, giving his team some offense. Big shot. That's the Hopkinton led at the halftime break, 37 to 31. Mafiori takes it up for the Hillers. Along the near side, coming down the lane. He'll take it back out to the right wing, up to Ambersoni. And now a pass over to Finfrock. He'll launch the three from the left wing. No good. Tip by Cooper over to Rosen, and Rosen puts it up and in. Great tip by Cooper. He created that opportunity for Rosen to get the book back. The third quarter was a back and forth battle. Early Milford foul trouble helped the Hillers net some points, but the Scarlet Hawks knocked down a few threes, outscoring Hopkinton 17 to 14, and it was a 51 to 48 Hillers lead heading into the fourth. And he'll pass over to Weatherby along the right corner, up top to Darling, drives up to the elbow, feeds Franklin Jr. up for the lane, and he's blocked by Finfrock. What a tremendous block underneath by Finfrock. Mafiori back to Finfrock. Finfrock feeds it in, pass it to Federer over to Dean. Dean oh, is going to oh, oh. take it up and in. Throughout the fourth quarter, it remained a close game, but the early foul trouble for Milford came back to haunt them. Here, feeds it up top to Weatherby. Weatherby back to Darling on the left corner, up for three. No, off the back iron it goes, tipped in the air, and it looked like it was simultaneous contact between Weatherby and Ambersoni, and the Hillers have it. Mafiori takes it up the far side. Along the short corner, kicks it out to Ambersoni. Ambersoni for three, got it! Oh, big three-pointer. Darling would have tied at the other end. Ambersoni gives them a six-point lead with six minutes to go. Hopkinton missed several free throws, but ultimately netted 10 points from the line in the fourth. Despite a couple Milford turnovers, the Scarlet Hawks struggled from the field. Hopkinton outscored Milford in the fourth quarter, 15 to 11, and took the game 66 to 59. Rivals, they don't play each other much, but whenever they do, it certainly seems like they play each other every year. The intensity is just amazing out of Hopkinton Milford game. Darling takes it across midcourt, down the lane, up with the right hand, no good. And it's collected by Ned Dean, and that is going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are going to take down the Milford Scarlet Hawks by a final score of 66 to 59. The Hillers of Hopkinton are moving on to the sectional finals where they will battle Wayland at Worcester State University. That game will be Saturday night at 7 p.m. Hopkinton Wayland. What a game between these two teams. The Milford Scarlet Hawks end their season with a record of 14 and 8, while the 12 and 10 Hillers advance on to battle Wayland in the Central Division II sectional finals at 7 p.m. on Saturday, March 7th from Worcester State University. In point scoring for the Hillers, Stephen Mafiori had 16 points, Tommy Ambersoni knocked down 12, Elon Rosen was the team leader with 17, Ned Dean pitched in with 10 points of his own, a great team effort by the Hopkinton Hillers, and they are moving on to the sectional finals. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, Hopkinton. Matt Clark here to bring you everything happening this week on HCAM. 
So sit back and get ready for this week's edition of the H Camp Insider. On Friday, March 6th at 5 p.m., longtime musician Mel Green shares his unique brand of folk music on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, March 9th at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkin and Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, March 10th at 6 p.m., the Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m., the Conservation Commission meeting will air live on YouTube. On Thursday, February 12th at 7 p.m., the School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Boys Basketball Playoffs vs. Grafton and the Hillers Girls Basketball Playoffs vs. Wayland Games will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv as well as our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. The annual Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair took place and many projects were on display. We found a, a organism called slime mold that's basically really good at designing optimal pathways. It has been proven to like, to, like for example, the uh, interstates, like it designed those by itself, which took other designers like over 50 years to do. So we so basically our question was, could it do it for Hopkinton on a smaller scale? And the result is, not exactly, but it can still help a lot in the road design process. So if you look here, that's our modified version, and that's like the old version. And here's the slime mold like version of it that we 3 printed out. And uh, yeah, so you may notice that this, this is the old road. It took twice as long for from here to go to either of these roads. So basically, the problem was traffic was jamming there. So slime mold didn't design the best path. However, we did notice where it was jamming, right there, it also uh, kind of like cluttered up. It got, it's like a thicker yellow dot than uh, around the rest. So we concluded that while it can't exactly design off one pathways by itself, it can actually help and find like flaws like where traffic would jam on roads before they're developed. The judges chose 15 finalists to head to the regional tournament at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. So our project was about developing a genetically identical cell line or a protocol for a genetically identical cell line specific to Huntington's disease, which is a fatal uh, and debilitating neurodegenerative disorder that affects approximately 1 in 10,000 people. And our goal was to develop it uh, in a manner that produces a genetically identical cell line so that we could expedite the research process for investigators and hopefully establish a basis for therapies and cures in the future, given that there are no uh, permanent therapies or cures available for the disease right now. Now. Ultimately, we uh, verified our uh, cell line's uh, success uh, with many quantitative tests such as qPCR and PCR. 
uh, finding that we indeed did uh, do genetic, perform genetic alterations on the uh, cell lines. And then we later applied the cell lines in our own applications tests to see if the fidelity we were trying to achieve with these genetically similar cells uh, was achieved, and we did, uh, seeing uh, uh, result, good results across the board. Um, this is probably the culmination about a year, year and a half's worth of work. This is a continuation from our science fair project last year, and we are continuing the research. Well, not really sure when we're going to stop, but uh, we're continuing it for now. And, and you guys are... Uh, you go to the science fair, correct? The regional science fair, yep. Terrific. How did it feel to be one of the winners today? Um, we felt really, we felt, we felt really, I felt really good. What did you? Yeah, it always feels good to move on to the next uh, level of competition, so uh, All right, we'll be well, happy there. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope My project is titled The Patient Specific Delivery of Proton Beam Radiation. So, uh, Many people get tumors in, in America. They're estimated to be about 700,000 people with tumors in America. And around 90,000 are expected to be diagnosed this year. And um, these tumors in the head and neck area are really difficult to treat using conventional forms of radiation. That's why doctors use this special type of radiation called proton beam radiation. Uh, what's nice about proton beam radiation is that it loses most of its energy in a really, really small location in space called the Bragg peak. So if we can position the Bragg peak inside the tumor, then we're good and we damage the tumor less than the surrounding healthy tissue. But that begs the question, which angle should, I, should the doctors uh, administer the radiation at so that the least amount of healthy tissue is damaged, right? You want as little collateral damage as possible while doing proton beam radiation. So my, pro, my, uh, my project attempts to solve exactly this problem, to try to find the best angle to administer proton beam radiation so that we damage the least amount of healthy tissue. So now, in this, I've taken into account the energy loss in each piece of tissue and also the relative importance of each tissue, and I've designed a way to calculate the damage that is done to healthy tissue. And then what I do is I have my program take in an image of a patient. At, at the moment, it supports four, uh, four different types of tissues. Um, it takes in their weightages. It takes in an image. And then it spits out which angle the radiation should come out at so, so as to minimize the damage to the healthy tissue. And how long did it take you to do your project? Right. So I've been working on this project since... Uh, well, around November, it's where I started emailing people from Mass General Hospital to see if I could get some information. And how did it feel to be one of the winners today? <laughs> it feels pretty good, I guess. I mean, yeah. yeah. So what an exciting day. This was definitely one of the largest fairs in school history. We had 41 projects, um, I think over 85 students represented of 9th through 12th graders. So such an exciting day and so wonderful to have this much enthusiasm in the town for science and engineering. Terrific. And, uh,